the last thing that we are going to do is make our first API call. That's what this has all had all been building up to. It's all very exciting. Similar to the other example, there is a very easy to follow example in the Python library. List accessible customers, which we can grab right here. And basically just run what's in here. Customer service from our client.get customer service. Use our customer service to call this method, get our results, print some results. So the first thing we need to do though, you can see there's the creation of a Google Ads client with a version, version 10 here. And there's also some error handling. If you've looked at our examples before, this is all pretty boilerplate. What I would actually like to do is, since we are going to be writing potentially other examples, I'm just going to write some generic functions in order to handle some of this boilerplate logic so we can keep our code a little bit cleaner. So we'll just call this GA runner, it's our Google Ads runner. Okay, and we'll have one function called create client. And we'll have another one called handle errors. Probably need both of these. We'll create our Google Ads client here. So one thing I want to point out is if you are running examples just from your local machine or server in a single tenant environment, you can just have all of your credentials loaded in a single configuration file with a specific name and path. And if you use this with the specific version, this will work perfectly fine. But in our case, as I've mentioned uh, many times, this is a multi-tenant app. And now with our secret manager in place, what we can do is uh, programmatically put the refresh token for our given user into this Google Ads client. So what we're going to do first is I actually just want to take the version out of here and put it into just a variable. And dot load from dict. So let's create a dictionary. So as I mentioned earlier, we're doing almost everything from scratch. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to skip the portion about getting a developer token uh, very quickly. If you have a manager account, go to the API center. You can create a developer token and then save it as an environment variable. But for now, we are just going to port OS. Developer tokens os.environment. And I have these saved. Client ID, we just saved as client ID. As you recall, we used it earlier. Client secret, let's stop environment, client secret. That one we haven't set yet. So if we head over here, client secret, Refresh token is equal to refresh token. Use Proto Plus. We'll set that to true. And use Proto Plus is a configuration option that specifies which type of Proto Buff message you want to use. And you can read more about it on the Python client library README. So, the thing we need to do next is create our refresh token. Whenever we create a client, theoretically we're going to be hitting whatever endpoint it is, maybe it's that customer's endpoint that we just created, and we'll pass in a token, which is from the local storage from that initial request to give us the identifier. From auth.secret, import secret, create a secret equals secret token refresh token equals secret dot get secret version. 
So this will work if the user already has a secret saved, right? Because we don't want to have to force them through the OAuth process every single time. However, if they don't have a, a refresh token that is valid, we need a way to kind of let the user know so they can re-authenticate. Maybe they've you know revoked their access, like I've showed you a few times, or you know whatever it may be. We need to handle that. I'm gonna wrap this in a try block. Accept, erase, value error, and we'll use the error string invalid refresh token. Now, what this is going to do is catch any error that comes up in the creation of our Google Ads client. So for our purposes, we're going to assume that if there was an error created in the Google Ads client, there was an issue with the refresh token. In actuality, that's not true. And in fact, there can be a number of things that go wrong in the creation of the Google Ads client, such as issues with your client ID, client secret, developer token, etc. But for our purposes, we're just going to assume that something went wrong with the refresh token. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to demonstrate when we eventually integrate this into the client application, how to gracefully handle uh, either missing or revoked access as it relates to the refresh token. So if we take a deeper look at this, you can see here there's two things that could possibly go wrong. One is this call to get secret version. If this is the first time the client's using the application, then a secret version doesn't exists for that person. So we're gonna get an error when we call that method and try to retrieve the secret from the secret manager. And on the other hand, if a user were to revoke access, like I've shown you a few times on that accounts.google.com security page, then the refresh token wouldn't work and this would fail when we actually go to create the client with that refresh token. In any case, what we wanna do is have the user go back through that login flow to generate a new refresh token. We'll save it to the secret manager and then we can move on with the flow of the application. In practice, when you're implementing this, you may wanna have more granular error handling just to catch uh, some of those other issues that I brought up as it relates to the creation of the Google Ads client, such as issues with those other credentials. But for our purposes, let's just keep it simple and if anything goes wrong with the creation of the Google Ads client we'll throw this value error with the string invalid refresh token that way we can give that information to the client and then the client can force the user to re-authenticate and generate that new refresh token. Now let's turn our attention to the function that handles the Google Ads exception. This is really handle Google Ads exception and we'll pass in the exception. And I'm basically just gonna take this exact thing from that code example we were just looking at. Just kind of grab all this. All right, fantastic. All right, cool. So now that we have this in place, making API calls is very, very simple. All right, so now we've got our GA runner in place. And this is nice because if I ever wanna update the version of my library, I don't have to go around the entire library doing this everywhere. Basically, all I have to do is just change this, like say version 11. Obviously, I have to take care of any changes in the API itself, such as breaking changes, but this should make that process a lot more efficient. The other benefit of this, as you can see, is that refresh token is dynamically generated every single time.